Hey investors, Bradley here from Watson Estates and you're listening to Toronto's number one real estate podcast. We are number one on Google Podcasts for Toronto real estate. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm so excited today to look at what we've been seeing as far as stats out of Chinese real estate. Now, when I kind of survey the land and I look at what other people are putting out as far as content, even in the main news, I don't see a whole lot of information about what's been going on in China. So I thought, you know what, let's put this together. Let's share some of the information and the insights that they have because we are pretty much a month and a half to two months behind them as far as reopening. And so what happened to them in the last couple months is gonna have a big impact, assuming that we follow the same trend as them on our real estate market. So let's jump right into some of the stats. So when we look at the closures, now in Wuhan, in China's Hubei province, they actually went into lockdown on January 23rd, just to kind of line up our dates. And they reopened officially on April 8th. So that was approximately two and a half months they were closed. Now here in Ontario, we've been closed just over two months. So if we're on that same track, I like to think things will open up sooner rather than later. And so, and we are actually two months behind China by those dates as well. So again, what, what happened there? Like when, as they reopened, what were some of the headlines? What did they look like? So I wanted to start off with pre-opening in China and then shortly after the reopening, what has happened? What has changed as far as the number of sales, the price of units and pre-construction units? And are they at a place where they're gonna be able to finance our development here? Maybe they can help us here in the GTA so there's some good news, there's some bad news, there's a little bit for everybody here, and it's up to you to make your own decision on what's gonna happen in the GTA. But great information that we definitely need to review. So this article was written on March 31st, okay? So these guys have not fully opened. That They were still about a week out of reopening when this article came out. China's housing market springs back to life as sales in 30 major cities triple with coronavirus crisis abating. Now, the subtitle goes on to talk about how they're comparing 30 tier one and tier two cities in March from, eight, from February. So February and March, because that's the data they had at that time, given all of the things going on. So the article reads this, China's private housing market is springing back to life as more sales offices reopened across the country following a nationwide shutdown, saving home builders from a deeper financial slump this year. Transactions in at least eight large cities, and they named them, and I'm not gonna embarrass myself with naming them for you, but fill in the blank, Chinese words, indicated buyers have returned in recent weeks with volume surpassing the average levels in the final quarter of 2019. So we're actually outperforming the last part of 2019, according to China Real Estate Information Corporation. Quote, there's a release of pent up demand from the spring festival and the coronavirus lockdown period in February. Thus, we are seeing partial warming up of the property market. Hmm. We haven't heard much of that around here, have we? Well, they've been hearing it there, so let's see what happens here as well. Sales in even lower tiered locations won't rebound as quickly. This is an important point, guys. One of the things that I noticed as I was looking at these stats is the first tier and second tier cities definitely seem to be outperforming the smaller ones. So as we kind of get a rebound, if it looks like it did there, you can expect that the first and tier Second cities across Canada would be in a way better shape and the rebound would happen far quickly, far quicker than it will in some of the smaller areas. Property sales in terms of square meters across the nation are expected to show a 13.8% drop in the first half and 4.5% for the full year. So significant drops at the beginning of the year, kind of coming back, but still not where they were at the at its peak by the end of the year. Now, one and a half months later from that article puts us into May, May 15th, which is where we're starting to get a little bit better of a picture. What happens when you open for a month or two? What does that start to look like in the Chinese economy? Well, this article is called China Property Investment Rebounds in April as Economy Reopens, Sales Decline Eases. Real estate investment in China quickened in April while property sales fell at a much slower pace. Reuters calculations based on official data showed on Friday, providing some relief as Beijing, Beijing looks to restart the economy from coronavirus related shutdowns. So optimistic news coming out of this article on Reuters. And this was actually published in the UK. The property market is a key driver of growth in the world's second largest economy and was among many segments of the Chinese economy hit hard by the coronavirus and tough containment measures, of course. Real estate is gonna get hit because there's so much money 
put into that as an investment. But let's look at the sales numbers that they've published here. I want to start off with the price. Now, when they group these together, they say they call it property investment because they com it comprised of both residential, but also offices and other commercial buildings. So they've kind of grouped them together for the sake of this calculation. And they found in the first quarter, January, February, March, April, that it fell 3.3% combined. But when we look at March and April, as they were coming out of closure, and then now that they're out of closure, March was up 1.2% and April was up 7%. Significant growth in price, not that far, pretty much within a month or two after reopening. But let's look at the number of sales because we know here in Ontario, we've seen sales drops of the high 60s, even as early as last month. So are we gonna start to see things come back? Well, let's look at what happened here. The number of sales in the first quarter was a combined decline, again, January, February, March, April of 19.3%. But when we look at March, it was down 14.1% and April was down 2.1%. Almost a full rebound from an almost 20% drop in a matter of a couple months since reopening their economy. And when we look at housing starts, because we know here in Ontario, we're getting clobbered on the construction side as well. The new construction starts in March were down 10.4%, but in April, they were down only 1.3%. So again, almost a full recovery for their new construction starts year over year in a matter of a month or two. So for anyone who's sitting over here thinking it's impossible for our real estate market to start to go on an uptick at this point, you guys have some more news coming as we start to see the Ontario information released as Treb starts to publish data. Because at this point, we don't got a lot. All we have is last month, which didn't look all that great. Now, of course, all of this is to say that this is going to take months for regrowth. Like we're not looking at like a full recovery here, but we are seeing growth now. Pretty much telling me, and I've said this in past podcasts, go back and have a listen, that I think we've kind of come through rock bottom. That's my thoughts. Take it or leave it. Create your own, your own thinking on it. And so what comes out of this is, okay, wait, now China's doing good. Are they going to maybe, because we know in, especially in some of the Western areas of Canada, we've seen a lot of Chinese investment. Could maybe a fixing of the Chinese market mean investment here in the GTA or in Vancouver? So there's an article that came here talking about Hong Kong, because Hong Kong has a ton of mainland China investments. So the article is called Mainland Chinese Buyers Disappear from Hong Kong Real Estate. So if you want a little bit of negative news, here it comes. The world's priciest property market, talking about Hong Kong, has lost its most important source of inbound investment. Mainland Chinese buyers are shying away from real estate in Hong Kong as the coronavirus pandemic clouds the economic outlook and keeps the investors from traveling to the city. This is crazy, guys. Listen to this. No commercial property transactions in the first quarter involved a buyer from mainland China. The first time that's happened since 2009, according to CBRE Group. No investment. So you might think, okay, well, maybe it's not a lot, but it is because when we read about wealthy individuals from China used to dominate the high-end home market with about 60% of international buyers hailing from the mainland over the past 10 years. So they are a significant portion of the investment and yet it's come to almost complete halt. Prices for luxury pro properties across Hong Kong dropped an average 4.5% in the first quarter from the year earlier. So quote, this comes from the CEO of Hong Kong and Greater China, Saviels, I guess it sounds like a real estate brokerage, but they said the majority of the buyers are locals. What domestic demand there is, however, remains robust. Hong Kong recorded its best weekend for secondary apartment sales in seven years last weekend. There have been no local COVID-19 infections in the city for 14 straight days. So Hong Kong is doing amazing. They're doing excellent but none of the investment is coming from mainland China. It's all coming from within. And so Hong Kong is surviving because of you know the strength of Hong Kong locals. So what makes you think that if they're not investing in Hong Kong, which is so much more convenient, right? And has historically seen a ton of investment, 60% of it. Whereas here we're talking like 5%, like barely anything here in the GTA. What makes you think that those same main mainlanders in China are going to be investing here in the GTA. It's not going to happen. So here's an article came out of dailyhive.com. Institutional investors and developers based in mainland China are expected to not only slow down their outboard, outbound investment overseas real estate markets, but increase their dispositions. 
especially with the economic uncertainty arising from COVID-19. So not only are they not going to buy here, chances are good they're going to sell. But this isn't new information either, which we'll see in a second. A new survey by Cushman and Wakefield found that 48% of these investors are planning to reduce their investment in international markets in 2020. So the Chinese buyers are actually pulling back in general. The Canadian market is no exception, which was already experiencing a slowdown in investment originating from mainland China prior to the pandemic. So don't think that this is a pandemic issue. What it actually is an issue, the issue here was some of the challenges that was apparently messing up our market back in 2017, a little thing called the foreign buyers tax that was implemented. Moves like that doesn't seem to be going over well. And we've seen a steady decline in the amount of foreign investment. And so we really did it to ourselves. So we can't even blame the pandemic here. The activities by mainland China investors were mainly due to central government policy guidance and tightened lending to real estate developers and operators. And we anticipate this trend of decreasing investment and increasing dispositions to continue in 2020 by mainland China investors. So they were already slowing down. We see, when we look at the numbers, we can actually see a decline. This is the third, apparently this is the third consecutive year, the number of investors that were increasing their overseas investment dropped, now down to just 13% of respondents. As well, 2019, last year, marked the first dispositions by mainland China and Hong Kong investors outweighing acquisitions. So again, pandemic's not causing this. They were actually selling more than buying even last year. So again, we can't blame China for this, but what's that to say is we can't, we, we are left with what we have locally. And we've already started seeing this. We talked about this in past podcasts. We started seeing developers noticing that it's not necessarily investors, but locals, people who need housing that seem to be coming up and still buying or keeping our market, at least in a level of status quo here. But if we look at the articles that come out of China, right? Like here's a, just a few highlights of the names. Virus fallout fails to kill China's property obsession. Here's another one. China property investment rebounds in April as the economy reopens. Let me ask you guys, does that sound like a failing real estate market? Not to me. Is that something that we will experience here in the GTA? Well, that's to be determined. But when I listen to the concerns that still live in China, this is what they're saying. The sales outlook for the whole year depends on development of the coronavirus condition. It appears that control of the, ep the epidemic have improved in China, but imported infections could increase as people travel to China when other parts of the world are facing the pandemic. The thing that China is most concerned of today is a second wave of the pandemic. But let's face it, guys, listen to the podcast we've done. That's our big concern here too. So although we may be across the world, maybe the lessons and the things that are facing our future are not all that different. And I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you guys are learning some stuff. Give us a thumbs up. Hopefully you guys find this valuable, this information. The fact that you've listened through this entire podcast tells me you probably are. This is very encouraging news from China. And hopefully we see the same thing here in the GTA. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and keep it real.